Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Shu, author of the Lightroom blog and Lightroom workshops on video, available at laurashu.com. In this video, I'm going to show you the redesigned import process, new in Lightroom 6.2 and Creative Cloud 2015.2. Adobe's objective has been to streamline the import process to make it easier for newer users and to modernize the interface. Now my goal is going to be to show you what's new, not to give you a thorough lesson in importing. I'll release new videos soon that give those thorough lessons for people just getting started with import. Now importing does the same thing as it used to, meaning that it adds photos to the Lightroom catalog. And if they're photos coming from a memory card or from your phone or camera, it will copy them to your hard drive in the process as well. Let's go into import. And the first thing we see is the new Add Photos screen. This screen is designed to allow you to just focus on the task of selecting the photos that you want to import. Lightroom detects any devices I have plugged into my computer, so my memory card and my phone here. You can also see the memory card and camera icons down here. If you're an Elements user and you still have Elements on your computer, you'll see an option here to import your Elements photos into Lightroom. Then further down here, we see folders on my hard drive that Lightroom has determined might be folders that I want to import. Now, if you don't see the photos here that you want to import, then you'll just click on Browse Computer and go out to your Pictures folder or wherever they might be and select your folder. I'll go ahead and cancel this. I'll go back to my memory card and we'll go with this. And that brings me to the main import dialog here. I see my source of the memory card in the top left, and here are the photos. So the interface is much cleaner. Photos that are dimmed and have a check mark will be imported. If I click on a check mark to uncheck, that photo will not be imported. Now for users who simply want to use the default settings and get their photos into Lightroom, you can just click on the import button at this point. But of course, there's more that I want to show you here. If you change your mind on the source, or you don't want to use the Add Photos dialog, and I'll show you how to turn that off, you can click up here on the current source, and it reveals the source panel. So for example, I could go into my Pictures folder, and if I want to get to a subfolder in Pictures, I can see Pictures highlighted here. I can just come down and select a subfolder. Now these particular photos are dimmed and don't have check marks because they're already in Lightroom. Now that you've seen the source panel, I'll go back to my memory card and I'll click in the top left to collapse it again. Now all of the rest of the import settings are hidden behind this gear symbol, so I'll click on it. Now I recommend, regardless of your level of experience, that you always check here in the destination panel to understand where your photos will go if they're being copied from your memory card or another device. So by default, they're going to go into your pictures folder, organized in date folders within year folders. Notice that we don't have the folder preview that we had in older versions. This is something that, frankly, I'm disappointed about. I'm all for keeping things as simple as possible, but I want to see a preview of exactly what folders are going to be created and where they're going to go so I can be sure I have my settings set up right. Now if you want to change where your photos go, instead of pictures, you can click on select here and select any other folder. I'm going to cancel out of this. Next, you can add keywords here. It's really hard to read this, but it says enter keywords. We have this new copyright info box. So I typed in 2015 Laura Shu. This will appear in the data that tags along with my photos. It won't show up on top of the photos. This is useful for folks that don't understand or don't want to take the time to create a metadata preset that has your copyright information. Presets are still useful because you can add more information, like your contact information. Other settings are lumped under advanced here. These really are settings that beginners in particular don't need to worry about right away. They're carried over from old versions, so I'm not going to go through each one of them. But I do want to point out that this is where you would convert your raw files to Adobe's DNG format if you want to when you're copying them from a memory card. 
Now I want to talk a minute about rename files. Notice that we don't see our original file names underneath the thumbnails. You have to hover over a photo and wait for the tooltip to come up. So this file name is underscore a043053.orf. If I want more meaningful names, I can use rename files just like before. Choosing a template, I'll go with custom name sequence and Pretending these are all cat photos, I'll just say cats. And with the sequence number, my files will be named cats, one, two, three, etc. Now, what we don't have any longer is the file name preview that would tell us what the name of our first file is based on what we've set up here so that we can make sure we have it set up right. So we'll have to do without that. So that's pretty much it for the new import dialog. I've mentioned some things that we're going to have to do without. I want to mention some others as well. The first one I think everybody should pay attention to, and that is that in the past, with a memory card, we've had a checkbox to choose to eject the memory card from our system after the import process is done. We no longer have that eject option here, so after importing, you need to remember to go out to your system and eject the memory card before you unplug it from your computer or from the card reader. If you don't eject it, you get an error message on Mac, and in any case, you risk damage to your files. Another thing that we no longer have, which not a lot of people used, but could come in handy, let me select uh, my computer here so that the file handling options come up here. So we have the add and copy options, but we don't have the move option. So you won't be able to rearrange your files on your computer during the import process. You can always do it later manually with a folders panel. Going back to my memory card, because we don't have the destination tree here, we can't deselect a particular date, we don't see drive space available, and we don't have the filtering by destination folder. Also in this redesign, we don't have the option to import duplicate files. Now, generally, we might not want Lightroom to import multiple copies of our files, but if out on our hard drive we really do have multiple copies, sometimes it can be handy to import all those duplicates into Lightroom and then use a plugin to identify them and clean them up. But in the redesign, we can no longer import duplicate files, so you'll have to do that cleanup work outside of Lightroom. Finally, I want to talk about zooming in on photos. Generally, I import all my photos, and later in the library module, I go through them deciding which ones I want to delete. But some people, particularly professional shooters who need to process things as quickly as possible, want to make those decisions in the import dialog. If I select a photo and then I go to loop view, we can no longer click to zoom in on the photo to check sharpness. So you'll have to do that after import. I'll go back to grid view here. Now at this point, I would simply import the photos. I'm going to cancel though, since I don't need these photos in Lightroom. I want to give you a couple tips. If you want to get into the import dialog, but bypass the add photo screen, if you hold the command key down on the Mac or the control key on PC, the import button becomes import from. Keep the key held down, click on it, and you go straight to the main dialog with the source panel open. I'll cancel out of this. Finally, if you want to turn off the Add Photo screen completely, you can go into Preferences. On a Mac, I go to Lightroom. On a PC, I would go to Edit, then down to Preferences. And here on the General tab, I can uncheck Show Add Photo Screen. Now, as this is being released early October, having this turned on can significantly degrade Lightroom's performance because Lightroom is constantly scanning your hard drive for potential folders to show you on your Add Photo screen. So you could see a performance hit whether you're importing or doing something else in Lightroom, such as editing. So if you see that performance hit, you'll want to turn this off. I'll close Preferences. So that's it for the import redesign. Check out my blog for more information about the release as well as simultaneous releases of improvements to Lightroom Mobile and Lightroom Web. I'm Laura Shue.